Man will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails of the last priest. From fanaticism to barbarism is only one step. All things must be examined, debated, investigated without exception and without regard for anyone's feelings. We swallow greedily any lie that flatters us, but we sip only little by little at a truth we find bitter. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. Happiest are the people who give most happiness to others. A nation which thinks that it is belief in God and not good law which makes people honest does not seem to me very advanced. Life is but a series of misunderstandings. Every man has his dignity. I'm willing to forget mine, but at my own discretion and not when someone else tells me to. For me, my thoughts are my prostitutes. I am wholly yours, you are everything to me, we will sustain each other in all the ills of life it may please fate to inflict upon us. You will soothe my troubles, I will comfort you in yours. Poetry must have something in it that is barbaric, vast and wild. Whether God exists or does not exist, he has come to rank among the most sublime and useless truths. Oh! How near our genius and madness! Men imprison them and chain them, or raise statues to them. As long as the centuries continue to unfold, the number of books will grow continually, and one can predict that a time will come when it will be almost as difficult to learn anything from books as from the direct study of the whole universe. It will be almost as convenient to search for some bit of truth concealed in nature as it will be to find it hidden away in an immense multitude of bound volumes. There is no moral precept that does not have something inconvenient about it. The fact is that she was terribly undressed and I was extremely undressed too. The fact is that I still had my hand where she didn't have anything and she had hers where the same wasn't quite true of me. The fact is that I found myself underneath her and consequently she found herself on top of me. You live as if you were destined to live forever, no thought of your frailty ever enters your head, of how much time has already gone by you take no heed. You squander time as if you drew from a full and abundant supply, so all the while that day which you bestow on some person or thing is perhaps your last. You have all the fears of mortals and all the desires of immortals. What foolish forgetfulness of mortality to defer wise resolutions to the fiftieth or sixtieth year, and to intend to begin life at a point to which few have attained. What is a monster? A being whose survival is incompatible with the existing order. People stop thinking when they cease to read. Only passions, great passions, can elevate the soul to great things. The first step towards philosophy is incredulity. One swallows the lie that flatters, but sips the bitter truth drop by drop. If you want me to believe in God, you must make me touch him. The best order of things, as I see it, is the one that includes me, to hell with the most perfect of worlds, if I'm not part of it. 
it is better to reveal a weakness than allow oneself be suspected of a vice. The most dangerous madmen are those created by religion, and, people whose aim is to disrupt society always know how to make a good use of them on occasion. It is very important not to mistake hemlock for parsley, but not at all so to believe or not in God. No matter how much a man may study, reflect and meditate on all the books in the world, he is nothing more than a minor scribe unless he has read the great book. Monsignor, you are asking whether I promise God chastity poverty, and obedience. I heard what you said and my answer is no. Do you see the seg? With this you can topple every theological theory, every church or temple in the world. I picture the vast realm of the sciences as an immense landscape scattered with patches of dark and light. The goal towards which we must work is either to extend the boundaries of the patches of light, or to increase their number. One of these tasks falls to the creative genius, the other requires a sort of sagacity combined with perfectionism. How had they met? By chance, like everybody else. What were their names? What's it to you? Where were they coming from? from the nearest place. Where were they going? Does anyone really know where they're going? Nothing is duller than a progression of common chords. One wants some contrast, which breaks up the clear white light and makes it iridescent. Indeed, the purpose of an encyclopedia is to collect knowledge disseminated around the globe to set forth its general system to the men with whom we live, and transmit it to those who will come after us, so that the work of preceding centuries will not become useless to the centuries to come, and so that our offspring, becoming better instructed, will at the same time become more virtuous and happy, and that we should not die without having rendered a service to the human race in the future years to come. I give my mind the liberty to follow the first wise or foolish idea that presents itself, just as in the Avenue de Foy our dissolute youths follow close on the heels of some strumpet, then leave her to pursue another, attacking all of them and attaching themselves to none. My thoughts are my strumpets. Mind what you do, if you deceive me once I shall never believe you again. Pithy sentences are like sharp nails which force truth upon our memory. One may demand of me that I should seek truth, but not that I should find it. To speak to you frankly, reader, I find that you are the more wicked of the two of us. How satisfied would I be if it were as easy for me to protect myself from your calumny as it is for you to protect yourself from the boredom or the danger of my work? There are two public prosecutors, and one of them is at your door, punishing crimes against society, the other is nature herself. She is familiar with all those vices that escape the law. The thought of, our, destruction is like a light in the middle of the night that spreads its flames on the objects it will soon consume. We must get used to contemplating this light, since it announces nothing that has not been prepared by all that comes before, and since death is as natural as life, why should be so afraid of it? In order to shake a hypothesis, it is sometimes not necessary to do anything more than push it as far as it will go. Because, without knowing what is written up above, none of us knows what we want or what we are doing, 
and we follow our whims which we call reason, or our reason which is often nothing but a dangerous whim which sometimes turns out well, sometimes badly. One cannot get rid of a good education, nor, unfortunately, of a bad one, which often is such because one has not wanted to defray the expenses of a good one. Master, Master, you obviously haven't thought about this at all. We only ever feel sorry for ourselves, believe me. The enjoyment of freedom which could be exercised without any motivation would be the real hallmark of a maniac. Our truest opinions are not those we never change, but those to which we most often return.